Fexofenadine is a type of antihistamine medication, which means that it blocks the H1 receptor and is used clinically to relieve itch. It is also known by its two main brand names, Telefast in the United Kingdom and Allegra in the United States. Now, in the United Kingdom, fexofenadine is a prescription-only medication, whereas in the United States, it's a medicine that can be purchased over the counter without a prescription. So antihistamines are used to relieve itch. So itchy skin, itchy eyes, itchy nose, all of these conditions can be treated with antihistamine medications. And they're useful because itching these sort of conditions often makes them much worse. So by relieving the itch, you can actually improve the condition by stopping the person from scratching it. Now, antihistamines are mainly a medication of outpatient medicine, so they're mainly a medicine used by primary care practitioners and maybe dermatologists as well. When we do prescribe antihistamines in inpatient medicine, there's only one that we ever tend to use, and that is chlorphenamine, pyroton. Chlorphenamine is, to my knowledge, the only antihistamine that can be given intravenously but it can also be given orally, and we use it for two main things. One is in the medical emergency anaphylaxis, which is an extremely dangerous allergic reaction that people can uh, go through when they uh, ingest or in other ways are exposed to something that they're allergic to. I'm not going to talk about this in detail because I've actually never seen anaphylaxis. I've been a doctor for two years and I've never seen anyone have an anaphylactic reaction, but I'm told that it is terrifying and in that situation we would give intravenous chlorphenamine. But because I've never seen a case of anaphylaxis, I've never actually given intravenous chlorphenamine. Instead, the situation where I use chlorphenamine, I use oral chlorphenamine tablets and I prescribe them to patients who have itchy skin conditions or itchy eyes who are impatient at the time for some other reason. In my hospital, chlorphenamine is the only antihistamine that is actually stocked in the ward cupboards. Other antihistamines, if we wanted to prescribe them to patients, we'd have to order them from the pharmacy and wait for them to come up before we'd actually be able to give them to a patient. So if we want to be able to give the medicine quickly, we have to use chlorphenamine. Now, chlorphenamine is a moderately good antihistamine. It's quite good at relieving itch. The problem with chlorphenamine is that it can cause significant sedation, so it can make people feel very tired. Now, this is why it's less used in outpatient medicine compared to other antihistamines such as fexofenadine, which we're going to obviously talk about and which is the subject of this video but in the hospital setting making a patient a little bit drowsy isn't such a bad thing because the patients are going to spend all day in bed most likely anyway they're most likely sleep deprived because hospitals are very noisy places so giving them a medicine that might help them sleep during the day despite the noise or indeed sleep at night uh, despite the noise uh, might be quite helpful so we don't mind the sedating side effect of chlorphenamine often in hospital. In outpatient medicine, however, the three main antihistamines that are used are loratadine, cetirizine, and fexofenadine, and they're usually used in that order. So say someone has an itchy skin condition such as eczema, and you want to give them a tablet to be able to relieve the itching from their eczema, you would likely start with loratadine. If that one isn't doing the job, you'd move up to cetirizine. And then finally, if cetirizine wasn't working, you could move up to fexofenadine. Now, each of them is a once daily medicine. That's what OD means here. And the doses are as follows. Loratadine comes in 10 milligram tablets and you can take one per day. Cetirizine also comes in 10 milligram tablets and you can take one per day. Fexofenadine comes in 120 milligram tablets. And again, the dose is one per day. Now, in the United Kingdom, loratadine and cetirizine can be bought over the counter and you don't even need to go to a chemist to buy them. You can actually buy them on supermarket shelves. Fexofenadine, on the other hand, is a prescription-only medicine, so if you want to get your hands on that, you either need to get your GP to prescribe it or, indeed, if you have a dermatologist, your dermatologist could prescribe it or you could buy it on an online pharmacist in the modern world. Chlorphenamine is also actually available without a prescription. It comes in four milligram tablets, and actually this dose is wrong. You can take it up to four times a day, so I'll just alter that. So Pyroton comes in four milligram tablets. You can take them more often than these 
free. You can take one tablet up to four times a day to relieve itch. Uh, and it is available without a prescription. However, you can't buy it on supermarket shelves. You do actually have to visit a pharmacist and talk to one of the uh, pharmacists and they will uh, talk to you about the possible side effects of this medicine. And if they're happy that you're going to be safe to take it, they will then sell it to you. Now, the reason that these three are preferred in outpatient medicine to Pyroton is that they are generally much less bad for causing the drowsiness that antihistamines can cause. All antihistamines can cause drowsiness because there are histamine receptors in the brain which are important in the functioning of the brain, and if these medicines block those receptors, uh, that can lead to psychological effects. However, these three are much less potent at causing neurological problems because they're much less good at crossing the blood-brain barrier and getting into the actual brain tissue, so they're therefore going to have much less of an effect on the histamine receptors in the brain. So these are the three that are preferred in outpatient medicine because of the decreased drowsiness effect. Do be aware, however, that many people do take these medicines and do report that these medicines have made them incredibly drowsy after they take them. Especially people find that when they begin one of these medicines for the first time, so let's say they've never taken the ratadine before in their lifetime, if they take it for the first time, they might find that the first tablet actually has a profound drowsy effect on them and then as they take it in subsequent days they'll find that that drowsiness effect gradually goes away and might co vanish completely so that it has no psychological effect on them in later days. In contrast, chlorphenamine when you continually take that it still continues to exert that drowsiness effect. Your body doesn't get used to it and stop allowing it to have that effect. So to summarise what we've said so far, chlorphenamine is the major antihistamine or anti-itch tablet used in inpatient medicine. In outpatient medicine, we don't tend to advise chlorphenamine. Instead, we like this ladder of antihistamines. We start with loratadine, which is classically viewed as being the least potent of these three. If that one isn't producing enough adequate anti-itch effect, then we go up the ladder to cetirizine, and then if that one's not working, then we go to fexofenadine. These two, the patient can buy themselves, so they can go through this part of the ladder themselves, and then uh, to get fexofenadine, they need then a prescription, at least in the UK, so they'll need to convince a doctor to prescribe it to them. In terms of where the strength of pyroton is on this ladder of antihistamines, it has a similar sort of anti-itch potency to cetirizine. Most people would put it on par with that. So stronger than loratadine, but not as potent as fexofenadine. A similar anti-itch strength to cetirizine, but much more sedating than cetirizine. So there are just a few more antihistamines that I'd also like to discuss and compare with the ones that we've discussed so far. So Acrivastine is the next one I'd like to discuss. This is again available over the counter in the United Kingdom. It comes in eight milligram capsules, I believe, and you can take one capsule up to three times a day as needed to relieve itch. This medicine is generally seen as not very sedating at all, and its potency is generally seen to be on par with loratadine, so it's that lower level of the ladder. And again, it's over the counter. You can buy it in supermarkets. You don't even need to go to a pharmacy to buy it. Next, let's talk about promethazine and diphenhydramine. So again, these two are not um, prescription-only medicines. You don't need a doctor to prescribe them to you. You can buy them in a pharmacy. You can't buy them quite in a supermarket. Again, you have to convince a pharmacist to sell them to you and they have to be sure that you're going to be safe with them. Now they are antihistamines, they can be used to relieve itch, however they are incredibly sedating, even more sedating than chlorphenamine. They've got generally about the same potency at relieving itch as chlorphenamine, but they are incredibly sedating. In fact, their main use now in medicine is actually a sleeping tablet. So promethazine, the most common reason we'd actually prescribe that to patients in medicine is as a sleeping tablet to take just before you go to bed. However, it does have a profound anti-itching effect. So if someone is mainly itching their skin or itching their eyes overnight whilst they're in bed, then that might be a very good medicine to give to them. It will make them sleep more deeply and relieve their itching at the same time. And both of those things will actually stop them from scratching their skin or scratching their eyes. 
putting them into a deeper sleep, be aware that that also reduces the chance that they're going to scratch. Diphenhydramine, similarly, this is usually used as a sleeping tablet. It's sold over the counter as a sleeping tablet in the United Kingdom. It's nitol. Again, you have to convince a pharmacist to sell it to you. They have to be sure that you will use it safely. And indeed, some people do abuse this drug because if you take 10 times the recommended dose, it actually makes you hallucinate. Uh, so some people deliberately do that to experience what it's like to hallucinate. I am told that the hallucinations are not pleasant at all. People generally describe seeing spiders and it being overall a terrifying experience that they never ever repeat again. So it's not a it's not a widely abused drug, but it is a drug that some people abuse to make themselves hallucinate. So again, it can be used as an antihistamine, as an anti-itch tablet. It's similar potency to chlorphenamine, but probably more sedating than chlorphenamine. It's usually taken once at night and it puts the person into a deeper sleep and relieves the itch and both of those things are going to stop them scratching their skin or their eyes overnight. Finally, the dreaded hydroxyzine. So this is viewed as the most potent antihistamine, the most potent anti-itch tablet that there is. It is prescription only. You cannot buy this over the counter. It is also called Atarax, and it's the one that dermatologists put people on after all else fails. So if fexofenadine itself fails to relieve the itching, if these other sedating antihistamines that they might be using overnight to try and stop themselves scratching their condition overnight aren't working, then dermatologists can prescribe hydroxyzine. GPs can prescribe it as well. Uh, and it is incredibly sedating, probably even more sedating than the ones we've mentioned already. It's incredibly potent at relieving itch, but it is generally viewed as being the last resort antihistamine. It's usually prescribed once a day and it will be taken at night because of the incredibly sedating side effect. So overall, fexofenadine is a very good, very effective anti-itch tablet. It also has a very long half-life. Its half-life is over 12 hours, so it continues to exert its effect for a long period of time. It is prescription only in the United Kingdom, and it is high up on the treatment ladder for itch. So it is not the first line drug that you would put someone on to relieve itch. That would be loratadine if we were talking about outpatient medicine, or it would be piriton if we were talking about inpatient medicine. So I hope you found this video interesting. The aim of it was really to compare and contrast the different antihistamines available and to sort of give you an idea of the order in which you would work through them as you're trying to find one that works for the patient. It is a lot of trial and error. Different people get along with different antihistamines and it's a case of trialing different ones and finding out which one they like the most and which one does the best job at relieving the itchiness of their condition. Be aware that these drugs are symptom relief drugs. They don't cure the conditions that you are putting the patient on them for. So for instance, eczema isn't going to be cured by an antihistamine. Hay fever isn't cured by antihistamines. They relieve the symptoms and they stop people from scratching them. And the scratching does make these conditions worse. And they're by uh, these antihistamines can help relieve the conditions, but they don't cure the conditions at all. They are symptom relief drugs and they really should only be taken when needed. They are not a medicine that you want someone to be on for the rest of their life. You want them to take them only when needed.